Daniel has one of the most famous examples of uh, finding the Messiah in the Old Testament. <clears throat> it has one of those um, Bible stories. I don't like calling them Bible stories, though I probably do it more often than I should, um, because it gives the connotation of a made-up story, a fairy tale. These are these are real things that happened, and supernatural, remarkable though they are, they are that because of the power of God. But these are real events that happened, and one of the more famous events recorded in the Old Testament is of the um, the three Hebrew youths cast into the fire, uh, the fiery furnace, and how the fourth man in the fire, um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, those are their uh, original names, their pagan names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they were um, commanded to bow before the golden statue of Nebuchadnezzar, and they refused because they only serve God. And so they were cast into the fiery furnace. And the flames were so hot that even the person who was stoking the fires and opening the doors, he died uh, from it. And so they throw the boys in. Of course, they're not really boys. I, I, mean, I think they were closer to 20 years old, whatever. But anyway, they throw them in, and they're supposed to be dead. But... They peer inside and they see one, two, three, a fourth man in the fire. Uh, Daniel chapter 3, verses 24 and 25 in particular says, The Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spoke and said unto his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the middle of the fire? Then answered they the king, Yes, true, O king. He answered and said, Well, then why do I see four men loose and walking in the middle of the fire, not hurt? And the fourth of them is like the Son of God. Um, now, there's some um, debate as to what exactly Nebuchadnezzar meant by the phrase, the fourth man is likened to the Son of God. Did Nebuchadnezzar mean it looks like one of my gods, one of the Babylonian gods? Or did he mean he looks like one of the gods that the Hebrews, or maybe the god the Hebrew uh, people worship? I don't know. I don't know what he interpreted it as. All I know is he saw something and interpreted it. So I don't care about his interpretation. I care about what he saw. He saw three boys go in and four standing therein. He saw three kids bound, tossing the fire, and four, those three, and another one, unloosed, unbound from their uh, chains, and then wandering around the fire as if they weren't in the fire at all. And he reckons that whoever that fourth one is was some kind of a divine being. Uh, and I reckon he's right. I see that as the Messiah. I know some people are going to be sticklers. They're going to say, well, it doesn't specifically say with an authoritative viewpoint that it was the Messiah. It could have just been an angel. And yes, it could have been just an angel. But I I just choose to believe. I want to believe that that was the pre-incarnate Christ <clears throat> come to um, make his presence known in Babylon there in the book of Daniel. So that's probably the most famous example. But there are other there are other sections of Daniel that reference the Messiah. For example, in Daniel chapter 7, verse 14, Daniel um, depicts the ascension of Jesus into heaven. He prophesies and he has a vision of the, the other side of Acts chapter 1. In Acts chapter 1, we get it from the apostles' viewpoint. Their vantage point is to look up and see Jesus ascend into the clouds and then disappear. From Daniel 7's perspective, you're getting it from the throne's point of view. You see Jesus come from the clouds and appear and sit on his throne and reign, the Ancient of Days. So that's the Messiah there in Daniel chapter 7. Um, of course, he is he is referenced in the form of God and the salvation of Judah out of Babylonian exile. That's just the concept that's peppered throughout, but... Um, those are probably the two most famous uh, sections that you're going to find referencing the Messiah. Obviously, Daniel 7 is without dispute. That is that is Jesus' ascension. But then also Daniel 3, I think, is also speaking of the Messiah to come. Oh, I almost forgot. I almost cut the video. Daniel chapter 2, um, the, the depiction of the great statue that Nebuchadnezzar has the vision of. Uh, it has the golden head and has the chest and arms of silver, the torso of bronze, the feet of the legs of iron, the feet of iron and clay. I think I have that right. Um, and he has this dream of this great statue. He doesn't understand it. None of his interpreters can understand it. So they summon David, or David, they summon uh, Daniel, and he's able to give the interpretation of the dream. And he says, well, you, Nebuchadnezzar, you represent the golden head. That's Babylon. But after you will come another king to rule after you. Nebuchadnezzar probably thought that was his son, but it was actually another kingdom, a whole other empire, the uh, 
the empire of the Medes and Persians. And after them would come the Macedonian Empire. And after them would come the Roman Empire. Um, and in the days of those kings, the days of the Roman Empire, the Lord would establish his kingdom, which can never be destroyed because all of the previous kingdoms destroyed the one after them. Uh, Assyria was consumed by Babylon. Medo-Persia consumed, um, well, Babylon consumed Assyria. Medo-Persia consumed Babylon. Macedonia, the Greek, Greek uh, Alexander the Great, consumed Medo-Persia. And then Rome consumed Macedonia, the uh, uh, Alexandrian Empire. Uh, so each one of those was consumed by the other one. They all fell to someone else. But in the days of the kings of Rome, Caesar's, would God establish his kingdom, his spiritual kingdom, which can never be destroyed. It will never be consumed. It will never be uh, taken over. Uh, it will always have its one king forever. And that, of course, is the Messiah Christ. He depicts the stone cut out of the mountain that destroys everything. And in its wake is the great holy kingdom, that being the kingdom of the Messiah. So Daniel 2, Daniel 3, Daniel 7, um, Daniel depicts the Christ to come.